Konnichiwa from Japan. If you are taking a walk down this country, you will probably see a lot of trash cans, which brings us to the topic today, waste management in Japan. Firstly, I want to talk about how many different types of trash there are in Japan. In this country, there are many types of trash, but there are four basic ones. The first one is combustible trash, which includes paper, diaper, plastic bags, rubbers such as slippers, and other plastic like toothpaste containers. The second one is incombustible or non-burnable trash, such as long plastic cords or ropes, ceramic products or pot, glasses like eyeglasses, and small appliances like cassettes. The third one is oversized garbage, which includes home furniture like wardrobes, bookshelves, tables, bicycles, and carpets. The last is bottles and cans, which basically are just soda cans and plastic bottles. In Japan, there is a schedule for collecting specific types of trash. Combustible trash will be collected twice a week, incombustible trash will be collected once a month, while for bottles and cans, it will be twice a month. So, let's move on to a new question. Where do they all go? Japan has a recycling rate of 20.8%, meaning that most of the trash will be burned. If the number of municipal waste incinerators in the US is 150, and in Germany is 50, then in Japan it will be around 1200, plus 3300 more privately owned industrial incinerators. In addition, in the US and Germany, most of the trash ends up in landfill. However, this is not the case in Japan, where everything is specifically sorted. Okay, time for another question. What effects do incinerators have? It is commonly known that incinerators are responsible for generating sulfur oxide, acid chlorhydric, nitrogen oxide, and dioxin. The incineration of waste will produce two types of ash, bottom ash and fly ash. Bottom ash comes from the furnace, while fly ash comes from the stack and contains components that are extremely hazardous. Toxins are created at not just only the end of the stack, but rather at various stages all around the incinerators. The airborne dioxin eventually makes its way into the food chain, accumulating in fish, which is the main ingredient of sushi, a favorite dish of Japanese people. Babies exposed to high concentrations of dioxin, mainly in breast milk, tend to have lower levels of thyroid hormones, which plays an important role in studying. In addition, they are more likely to develop rash around their bodies. Now let's dig up and talk about the previous situation in Japan. In the 1960s to the 1970s, industrialized factories discharged organic mercury and cadmium, thus damaging the health of surrounding people and more people got hospitalized for this. Moreover, products made of plastic became widely used during this time. These products were made of plastic that couldn't return to the soil, and when they were burned, some plastic produced soot, acidic gases, and became a cause of serious air and water pollution. A factory called Chiso's Cooperation Minamata Factory in Kumamoto Prefecture of Japan discharged methyl mercury to the sea, which eventually accumulated in fish, leading to the occurrence of Minamata disease in 1956. As of October 2013, the total numbers of patients have reached 20,075. 70% of the world incinerators are located in Japan, making Japan's level of dioxin the highest among all G20 nations. Economic growth, urbanization, and illegal waste dumping has led to a decrease in the amount of landfill available. If this problem is not solved, our living environment will be disrupted, and so will our industrial activities. It is imperative for factories and landfills to have a swift progress with the residential area. Furthermore, it is important to limit the amount of waste generated and to promote the recycling of all recyclable resources. With Japan's high-tech incinerator facilities, Waste incineration has won trust from public as safe and sound. The current incineration technology in the country includes reduced emission of dioxin and acidic gas, as well as enabling electricity generation from conventional stalker furnace. Additionally, many parts have also improved, including improved combustion quality, stalker cooling, applying fire resistant materials on furnace, and recycling incinerate ash. Since 1992, the Japanese government has enforced law on controlling dioxin emission from stacks, improving incinerator facilities, and stipulating rules for measuring contaminated soil. As of 2011, 99% of dioxin emissions have reduced compared to that of 1997, which eventually makes everyone happy. The Japanese government also promotes
is the use of free up, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Furthermore, October has been specified as a 3R promotion month. So, what do citizens, not just only Japan, but the entire world, need to do? The simplest thing is to apply 3R all the time. For example, instead of using blank paper, use one side paper to print and to draw only. And when you go to the supermarket, consider taking your own fabric bag instead of getting plastic bag from the store and make sure to recycle all those soda can. Because why? Because the more you recycle, the less waste will be burned and the more magical our planet will become. <laughs>